paving me on the road with just incredible. Headed to do a couple of shoots, some some interviews, you know. That's it. Tell you a little bit about his life. Go do a day in the life. Just talk wrestling, you know. Give some knowledge to the wrestling fans that really don't know much, you know. We on the road, headed to New York City from Connecticut. I just picked up Justin Credible in his crib. We on the highway, on the road, heading back right now. Yeah, man. Tomorrow we're gonna do an event. We're gonna go meet Coach Memorial, VIP, take some pictures. Justin's gonna be with us, hanging out. We're gonna have some video and, you know, just make it happen. That's it. On the road. And I appreciate your time, man. Oh, I know. I appreciate well. everything you're doing for me. Man. Happy to be here, man. Good people. Talk about the business. Down. What we love, you know. Down. Just gonna throw this out real quick. Yeah, we're gonna go through this and just edit through what we like this right here, what we don't use and stuff. Take clips. Just be natural, I think. Yeah. Signals on. So, um, how did you get hooked up with ICW? With, uh, FTW, I'm sorry. FT Dub? Uh, they just, uh, they just contacted me. Brian just uh, needed somebody to come in, and I was, you know, local, and uh, that's pretty much it. How long have you, you been know? with them? I've uh, been with them probably since November of 2011, so I've had a good, a good little run with them. I'm going to be doing uh, as much as I can with them, so I'm on every show. Yeah. They're trying to expand. They're, they're, they're a good little promotion. I think they got a. Uh, one of the better things going on right now, as far as locally in New York. Unfortunately, there's not a lot out there anymore. You know, there used to be so much out there. It's just I not. watched one of these shows and I seen him. <coughs> I don't know if you know him. I forgot his name. Um, he had the world title there um, before. I think a little greatness. You know, a little greatness. No, I don't. Well, um, I think he was a gay guy. You don't know. I don't. It doesn't, it doesn't ring a bell. Well, why would you think that? I, I don't understand sometimes. Like, you know, I I, I I go to these little shows, right? All right. If you're gonna promote wrestling and give a wrestling show, and you're gonna you're gonna promote a world title, then make the world title look special. I always believe that. You know? Yeah. Um, I went to one of these shows and I seen their world title, and it's like. You mean the actual title yeah, itself? It's yeah. Like a piece of garbage. Yeah. Why would you? Why would, if they, they, they always if they do taking their time to, to, you know, do the show. And obviously, you love the business. You know, why not spend a couple of hundred dollars or thousand dollars and get a good belt to yeah. represent your company? Nice. They should. They should. And there's not a. There's no excuse. They. They always nowadays, especially. There's always places where you can get them. They make I custom. Know, they make I know, custom belts. I, and I got the. I got all the information online. Yeah. That they make them custom. You know, yeah. that's what I don't understand. Like, why they don't spend some money? And a lot of the biggest problem in the wrestling business nowadays, um, and I've said this a lot, and I'm glad you brought it up so I could say it here. Um, before there was only real promoters in the business. Um, now anybody that can go online could buy a ring and call yourself a promoter. Um, before, you had to know somebody in the business, you had to be in the business, work hard and, you know, really hustle your way into the business to be able to do those things, earn a reputation before you could start promoting. Now with social media and all that other bullshit, you know, anybody, I get, I get so many people that hit me up on Facebook, I don't know who they are, you know, and most of them are just marks that want to talk to just incredible. Yeah. Um, you don't know who's legit, who's not. You know, and nowadays it's easy to get, you know, to to get a website and look legit yeah, when yeah. you're really not. You know, yeah. I've been, I've gone to shows where, you know, I show up, there's five people there, I don't get paid at all, yeah. I get screwed, and, yeah. you know, so it's very, very uh, just different. So now, a lot, you get, you run into a lot of people that are promoting shows that really have no business promoting shows, they have no money. Yeah. They're doing it on a shoestring budget. Um, and Quick so they, question. you know. Um, that that 
that he loves the business, so he's trying to make profit. Oh, they love the business. Oh yeah, I they mean, the people that's, that's yeah, trying no, to do they, these little local they don't shows. they don't mean any harm. They they love the business, but a lot of it I think they do it to to promote themselves. Yeah. You know, to, to have well to have a place for them to work. Yeah. It's almost like a glorified backyard promotion. Just try to open the door. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's glorified backyard wrestling. Yeah. You know, before you used to do backyard wrestling with just you and some friends. Now because you could get, you know, a ring. Yeah, you can make it do. Yeah. You know. Understand. That whatever. Yeah. It's just the business has just changed in that way, which is not good. Ain't nothing wrong with wanting to make more work, you know, for no, everybody. No, no, if it was legit, that, but, no, you know, if it was if legit. If you're gonna do it, do it, you know, where at least it looks decent. Yeah, you know? they, that's the thing is they, 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 they barely have any uh, operational cash, so they they can't, you know, stuff like bells. You know what's funny about that, though? That, um, you know, I love this fucking business, man. This is my shit, you know, and... And five months ago, I decided to open this website, you know. Two months ago, I put it out there. Yeah. I let everybody know I opened the site up, you know. And, you know, I've been, you know, trying to network and meet people. And, yeah. And, and, you know, one of the things that I really wanted to do was do a show. All right? Now, it boggles me that you telling me that these guys are working on a budget that they barely could make this show run. Right. right. Yeah, you have a guy like me that's willing to invest in something like that, yet they hold me out the door. Right. And don't want the help. Right. Crazy. What's that about? That makes no makes sense. Makes no sense. Makes no sense. And all I'm willing to do is help. Yeah. All I'm willing to do, and I have a mind for this shit. Yeah. You it's, know? It's, like, that don't make no fucking sense to me. All I'm willing to do is help and make it bigger and make it Because every, everybody thinks that they're the next Vince. Everybody thinks that their shit don't stink. And in wrestling, um, if everybody, we talk, I talk about this with all the boys all the time. This is a conversation I have regularly. Yeah. Is that instead of, you know, if everybody worked together, there would be a, more, a much better wrestling community where everybody could do better. Um, but by burying one another and being selfish and not branching out and working with other people in a positive way, they really make the business a lot smaller, smaller, a lot smaller and yes. harder for everybody. Yes. You know, because I'll tell you, there are very few promoters out there, Vince. very few promoters out there that are actually making money at all. And it's not that hard to make money if you're smart about it. Let me ask you a question. Do you know anything about the budget in TNA? Um, you know, if they're making money. No, they're not making money. You know, no. How much they spend and they what spend, are they losing? And, you know, they, things like that. They're. I, I don't know exact numbers. I don't but get I, exact numbers. But they're losing. They're losing. They're losing money. Right. They're losing millions. Money. Oh yeah. Oh god. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Oh, is it Dixie Carter's father that? has, you know, the position and gave it to her? No, um, I, I, I don't know the logistics of it, but I know that, you know, her father owns a big energy company. I know that. Billionaires. He's an entrepreneur. Yeah. yeah. And, and he, uh, I, I, I thought, her, I heard he bought, you know, and let her run it. He bought it. Her, Je Jeff Jarrett had something to do with it. Jeff Jarrett's dad had something her. to do with it. Yeah, I know Jeff. She was a she was all right. She was a uh, next door neighbor of Jeff Jarrett. Oh, okay. All right. Jeff Jarrett met her, and you know, somewhere or another, got into a conversation with her, and that's the way it happened. You know, um, first of all, does Jeff still own part of that business? I'm not sure. He has something in there. I'm really curious. Me I too. I I, I don't. Stole that. I wonder. I always wonder if they, somewhere or another, got him out of there. Uh, they try. They try to. I'm not sure. I'm thinking he did a deal where he gave them the company, but guaranteed that he have a job. They have for a life. spot, something like that. That's yeah. what I'm imagining because the only reason that he opened TNA was because he wasn't going to work him, no more right, right. for Vince. Right. It's the only reason. Yeah. So if you got somebody to keep the company going. I you would don't figure need you make the deal to keep your spot right. exactly what you want. And that's exactly, I think, what happened. Yeah. 
I thought about that a lot and I figured that I figured that was that that's what it was. I don't know though, you know, it's just me imagining. Yeah. You know? Just that makes sense though. I'd together. heard that too. Yeah, it's things I've heard, I just push it together. Yeah. You know? yeah. So um You think he had, you think he don't still have part of it? I don't think he owns it. Or uh, part owned it. He never fully owned it, but I don't think he he partially owns think it anymore. Say, think he runs oh, the he has say, yeah. He runs the company. Yeah, yeah. Well, some some parts, yeah. some parts. It's a mystery to me. Yeah. You know, I don't know exactly. I know he does have his. After what happened with him and Hogan in WCW, how the hell did you think that they was able to work that out? Uh, I don't. I I only believe half of what I hear and half of what I see. <laughs> you never you never know. You know, you don't know what's real and what's. Just out there for for media, mm. you know. Yeah, yeah, I understand. That. Because yeah. now the biggest work, since the business is exposed, you still, um, you know, you still. Now you're getting worked in a different way. They work you behind the scenes. Yeah. You know, they just work you in a smarter way. Yeah, but yeah. you're still getting worked. <laughs> Let me ask you, you know? a question. I got another question for you. Um, <coughs> all right. Can you set a story? That Bret Hart, he had a conversation with Bret Hart about the Montreal Screwjob. Right. Right. He said, he said that he asked Bret Hart, late, flat out asked him if the the, the Montreal Screwjob was a work. Right. It was a work. It was a work. All right. It, it was a total. A little bit. No, it was. It was a total work. It's. Bottom line, it was it was all planned out. Oh, the Hunter told me. Hunter, X Pac. Well, it was a work since day one. I was rolling. I was rolling with Bret Hart. Knew about it. They all knew about it. It was all planned. It was all planned. Canyon, that way. All right, this is what Canyon said. Canyon said that he got into the conversation with Bret. Asked him if it was a work. By the end of the conversation, he was telling Bret, you know, he made it. He, he, he made a point, he made a good point. He said, at the end of the day, when everything happened, it worked out good for everybody. Yes. It worked out good for Bret Hart, for Vince McMahon, for everybody. Right, yeah. Except WCW. Yeah. Except WCW. It worked out good for everybody in the, that came from WWE. Yes. All right? So when he told Bret this, that it seems like if it worked out good for everybody, Bret turned around and went like this. And told him like be quiet. Right. Like you got it. You hit it right in the button. Right. You know, we did. We worked it to trick everybody. We kayfabed it, and we never gonna tell nobody. Yes. It's gonna be and kayfabe it's still, forever. Yeah, and, and it's it still, still is. Day, well, it's it's. I think uh, nowadays more people. Uh, people are talking about it as if. They still not sure if it was kayfabe. Well, they're not sure, but most most people in the business know now that it's it was work. I mean, it was just too. Even Kevin know. Nash spoke about it and say he thinks it's a work that you know he gave his opinion. It wasn't a sure work that he said right, it was. Right. It was an opinion that he think it was a work. Right. He said it was possible it could have been a work. It was it, it was a work because just knowing how Vince is and the way things are, it wouldn't have went down that way. They had footage of everything. What you mean? Just the way they, they just the footage that they had. Brett was filming his documentary. It was all documented. See, yeah. You know, it was just all too pretty and perfect. That stuff would be behind the scenes. It wouldn't have been out in, in the open as much. You know, if it was real, it would have been a lot more quiet. It would have been more of an embarrassment wasn't factor. Wasn't much said though if you watched the documentary. Wasn't uh, wasn't. Uh, Thing, he went into the room and got Vince on the wire. Yeah. All right. That's the only thing that I could say that you know could have been planned out. That I would say. You know, I see that. Other than that, I see it as Brett asked permission to 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 do this documentary, and they allowed him to. Yeah. No. I mean. Uh, yeah. But it just it all it all just worked out perfect, and you know. Then again, they edited it too, so they probably edited it to look. Oh way. yeah. It was, it was the best. It was the be, the best angle of all time. You think so? Yeah, biggest work of all time. <laughs> and that's great. I mean, look, they were revolutionary. Exclusive, no kayfabe.com. You know, it was it was. Um, Bret Hart screw job. 
you know, it was uh, the best, most talked about angle in wrestling history. Uh, it was something that nobody had ever done. You know what's funny? I remember um, that night. <laughs> oh, man. Those were the good old days, let me tell you. Yeah. I, I remember sitting um, sitting watching ECW that night. They used to give ECW at night that night. Yeah. And that night, Paul Heyman used to have a... Um, uh, a hotline. Yeah, the, uh, the 900 was, number. Yeah. All right? Yeah. So that night before, on Saturday, he says, Bret Hart is going to lose the world title tomorrow. Exclusive. You have to watch. We're going to talk about it. Call this number. He knew about it already. Oh, yeah. The day before, he made me watch that screw job. I would have never watched it if I didn't see him make that announcement. Yeah, yeah. All right? Yeah. I didn't believe it because Bret Hart had the belt. All right. I didn't know how the fuck that was going to go down. Yeah. I said, I have to see this. Yeah, yeah. And I went and watched it. And then I went and seen that go down like that. Yeah. That was something else, man. That was crazy, man. That was, was crazy. Else. Like, I couldn't believe... Like I said, he had the belt. Paul Heyman makes this announcement. It's like, how the fuck is that going to happen? He just did the deal. We, everybody yeah. knew it was open. Yeah. He just did the deal. Nobody knew he was leaving at the time. You know, it was just getting out there that he was leaving. Yeah. It was out there that he had just did the deal with Vince to stay. So it was like, how the hell is he leaving? He has the belt. Right. You know? Right. I had to watch it. It was crazy. I bucked out. Yeah. I remember when he spit in his face. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Caught him right in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Do you think he, um, did he snuff him? Did he punch him? Uh, I heard he did. If it was a work, what, they, they oh, Vince that would too? take a, yeah, <laughs> no, Vince would take a shot. <laughs> so you know? you, it was funny because it kind of made sense that, um, um, the way you set the camera was, the cameras was too much at the right place at the right time. Yeah. Because when, after he got hit, they showed him coming out and stumbling a little bit. And it kind of makes sense that if that was Vince McMahon, that camera would have not been in his face. Vince, you know what? To. Vince would have said, get the, get everybody the fuck out of here. I don't here. want that camera in my face, exactly. He would have shut down. That he left the camera in his face. It but Vince, like but listen work. to me, listen to me. Vince would also have known we're, sh we're screwing Brett tonight. Right, we're gonna do him dirty. If Vince knew we're doing him dirty, why would he go ahead and, uh, you know what I'm saying? Allow people to, you know what I mean? Camera footage, right. yes, I understand. I was trying to get a shot at the WWE building. Oh yeah? I yeah. didn't even know we passed it. We're passing it right now. All right. Right over here. Right there. Oh yeah! There you go, WWE headquarters. Right there. <laughs> Just got a little shot nice. of that. Nice. Been there so many times. No, nah, just you know, Vince knew that that was happening, so Vince would have not allowed them yeah, to yeah, shoot yeah, that yeah, day. Yeah. That that makes sense. It makes Vince sense. It makes would, would sense. Vince Vince knew that days ahead of yeah, schedule. You know, I never. It's funny. You, you know, know, it's funny. I mentioned that about the camera, where the cameras be in certain places, certain yeah. times. Because I never looked at it that way. Yeah. And when they when y'all when I forgot who was the first person that mentioned that. I think it was Canyon. That that you know the the cameras was too right too perfect at the right time, you know, and it made sense, it made sense, the minute I heard it, I said, yeah, that makes sense, Vince would just, that you know, sense. he would have said, look, you guys can't film today, yeah, that's yeah. it, definitely, um, do you know anything about the David Schultz Stossel thing, the what now, the Dave, not the D. David Schultz Stossel when he slapped him, I know you wasn't there back oh, then, yeah. but I know you probably heard stuff, oh yeah, uh, you know no, I don't, I don't know much about it, no, no, it was what it was, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, I just want to say a little bit about that. In that interview, he said, um, you know, it's 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 known that Vince McMahon blamed Dr. D. David Schultz and said that he did that. He went ahead and did that on his own. Right, which okay. he which he probably did. But... Which I doubt very much, and I'm going to tell you why. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, John Stossel is a reporter who's doing a story on pro wrestling, right? This was before k Fabe was out in the open. Right. Okay? So John Stossel is doing this, this 
this this special on wrestling and he's trying to get people to say wrestling's fake or right. trying to get the inside scoops like like what people don't know yeah okay so this is what david schultz said and it kind of makes sense to me you know and i don't know it just shows that because it seems like Vince McMahon is a good dude in a sense. And then other times it just seems like he's a fucking asshole. You know? Yeah. Like, I heard people speak so good at him. And, and you know, say he got good heart. And he, you yeah. know, things he does. He pays, right, right, right. he pays for fucking... He don't have to pay for guys that, that are on drugs. That, right. that ain't been working for him for years. And right. he does it. Right. That speaks volumes about a person. He paid for my rehab two it years ago. It speaks volumes. And you don't even work for him no more. Right. You know, so then, okay, we have Dr. D. Davis Schultz telling his story about when he slapped John Starson. All right, <clears throat> in the story he says Vince McMahon sent him to, directly told him there's a guy he's doing a special on the business. He's trying to expose the business. I want you to blast him. Those words. That's what. Schultz said that Vince McMahon told him right. he's gonna come and try to interview you. I just want you to stay in character and blast him. Yeah, that's what he told him. All right. So he goes and do the interview. Ends up slapping the guy. Right. Yeah. The guy does a lawsuit. Puts yeah. a lawsuit on Vince McMahon. All and right? then he tried to say that it was his idea, right? Dr. D's. Vince McMahon said it wasn't him. It yeah. was his idea. You know, I guess try to get himself out of it. Right. Now, all right, we in Madison Square Garden, and you're going to do a special with a news reporter, and nobody tells you to go do that interview? That's bullshit. Yeah. Somebody directed him to go do that interview. Oh, absolutely. You know? And who you would think did it? Vince. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So my question is, you know, this guy literally protected your business. Right. He did exactly what you said. Right. He did exactly what you wanted. Yeah. You turn around and you fuck him. Oh, yeah. Get the heat off of you. You know, like, yeah. that's mad foul, yo. That's so That's foul, the, you know? This business is like that, man. It's very dog-eat-dog. -dog. What do you think? You think he sent them? Yeah, probably. Right? The probably. way I just put it, yeah. you would think he sent them. He's not yeah. going to go do that interview without somebody sending them. Vince you is know? very much like a mob boss. You know, that's how he is. What you mean by that? Elaborate a little bit. He's, you know, like how mob, mafia bosses think and how they do business. That's how Vince does business, you know? He basically was covering his ass. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, uh, he's always protecting himself. You ever met Dr. Man. D? Uh, yeah. yeah. A long time ago. You have any, anything to say Seems like a cool guy. Seems like a good guy. I don't know him very well, Seems but. Seems like a tough motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't, right. I wouldn't want to fuck with him. <laughs> he seems that way. Seems oh, like you oh. wouldn't want to fuck with that nigga. Uh, How about that kid, um, Eddie Mansfield? You know him? No, I don't. You don't know him? No. At all? You never met him? No. You heard about him? Yeah. You know who he is? Yeah. What are yeah. your thoughts on him? Of what he did? I, it's no, I don't think it's, uh, you know, what did he expose the business at that uh, time? Was that what he was known for? Yeah, Is that the he, 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 um, he went on 2020, he yeah. bladed on 2020. Yeah. He cut himself. He he basically took John Stiles, who the guy that um, Dr. D slapped, took him in the ring and showed him how to wrestle, uh, showed him the tricks. Yeah. Literally yeah. had it on camera, had him hip tossing him and I don't think, you know what, I think it was the start of what everybody knew was coming, which is... That was before Vince did it. Though. Right, but, you know, I think everybody knew. It's it basically, to me, it's no everybody different did. than those uh, shows know. that they have on Fox where they show the magician's tricks revealed. Reality. You still love, ma you still like magic, you know, and, you know, it's, I don't know, it's kind of letting people behind the curtain, and I... I, I don't believe that. I don't, no, I, believe, I, don't think it's I believe at that time, real. there were still people that believed wrestling was so? real. Yes, I was one of them. 
My brother was one of them. My brother was 17, 16 at the time. When the 2020 was gonna come out, he told me if, they, if I watch this and if they say it's fake, I'm never watching wrestling again. And I'm gonna be honest with you, it turned them away from wrestling. Oh, really? Yeah, it did. It did. It was never like the same. Yeah. He should be here with me. Right. He literally played with action figures with me, and he was like seven years older than yeah, me. Yeah. He was like 17, 18. Yeah. He knows this shit too, if he was to focus, but he lost the, the love for it because right. of that, wow. you know? So that's why I say I still believe there was people that, it was yeah. K-Fable, it was still alive. Yeah, well, it was it very was much still alive. alive. Yeah. And if K-Fable was alive, that means the secrets was alive, you know? Yeah. Back then, I, I'm telling you, I, my mother, I think, thought wrestling was real bad. Yeah. That's how I, that's yeah. how I didn't tell you that. That's how I love wrestling so much. You know, I think it's in my blood because of her. She was a fanatic, really? a fanatic. She loved Brett, that was her fa favorite. She went in her grave with a shirt, a poster really? of him, wow. a signed poster of him. Yeah, man. Wow. I'll show you the pictures. Yeah, yeah. Of Brett on, uh, on uh, the shirt and everything on the casket. It's nice. It was cool. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's how, that's where I got it from, man, from her. And I would say it's in the blood because I'm telling you, I remember watching wrestling, right? Right. And I don't remember my mother being there when I first turned on the TV and seen wrestling and got attracted to it. Right. But then later on, I noticed that she was addicted to it. Yeah, she liked it. Exactly. And I'm telling you, the minute I looked at it, it caught my attention. I was like, I, got the it was Bob Backlund. You got Bob the wrestling Backlund. bug. Yeah, it was Bob Backlund. He was just, I think it was him that did it because he was so clean cut yeah. and and such that goody good. Yeah. When, when you're a kid, you look up to that. Yeah. You know, I was like five years old. So, you know, I think that's what did it. The minute I seen him talking so nice and looking yeah. so healthy and, yeah, yeah. and talking so, you know, professional. I looked up to that right away, yeah. right away. I'm talking about, it caught my attention quick. Yeah. And I was addicted, addicted after that. You were just thinking, it caught you. Yeah, man, that was it after that, it's a wrap. I went to Florida, um, I was in Florida when Dusty was there, when yeah. Harry first started, when yeah. Big Jack was there, Superstar was there, Ron Bass was there. Ron Bass. Um, Ron Bass did, did the, um, did a saddle match with Barry Windham back when I was in Florida, wow. watching Florida Championship Wrestling. Wow. All right? So yeah. back then I've been watching, I, I got, I'm telling you, I remember it like if it was yesterday. Yeah. I remember one man gang coming in, the gang fucking mulligan up, just busting them up. That's when one man gang first came out. Yeah. They had him yeah. as a beast. Yeah. He came out and Nobody can fuck with him. That Gang's a good friend of mine. Huh? One man gang's oh, yeah? a good friend of mine. Yeah, he was in ECW uh, till it ended. And uh, actually, one man gang, uh, I just talked to him not too long ago. He's a corrections officer now oh, in, yeah? in Louisiana. Wow. I well, seen a shoe, a little shoe with him. What a nice guy. He's bald now. Yeah, what he a nice. He got tattoos all over his Nice head. man. Yeah. What a nice He seems man. really nice, man. It's funny you say that because I, oh. I, I was watching that video and I'm like, one man gang. I can picture people, this right? being yeah. one man gang. One of the nicest Talking people I've so ever humble met. And yes. So nice. Yes. Him and his like, wife wow. became good friends with me and Jill, yeah. my wife, and uh, great people. Great people. Yeah. Invited me into their home down there. Where nice, you met him? Nice How you met him? He came to ECW. Okay. Your wife said um, that he was um, real cool. She's cool with that dance. Yeah. Wife. Yeah. Sonia. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen a lot of video of him. He got his channel and I've been seeing Yeah, him. yeah. You could tell they close. Yeah. And when he won the world title, he went and celebrated with her. Yeah. That was cool, man. That was nice the way he did that. that, that, that you know, I, I see things like that, man, and I say, wow, that must be such an incredible feeling, man. Huh? It is. It is. It's very special. I could imagine. You know, very special. That's why we get into the business, you know? That's why we love it. Yeah. You imagine, but what kind of things you imagine before you got into it? What, you know, you imagine shit like that? Uh, like, I never did, man. I never thought I was gonna be 
I exceeded all of my uh, dreams and stuff, you know. What you mean exceeded? I, I, I achieved past it. Oh, I, yeah? never th I never thought I was going to be a world heavyweight champion. I was. Uh, never thought I'd get to wrestle in WrestleMania. I did. Yeah. You know. How many WrestleManias did? Just one. But, you know. And, um, you know, just the fact that, at, you know, at one point in time, I could, I'm in the history books as a world heavyweight champion. It means a lot, yeah. you know. So only very, there's very few, you know, world heavyweight champions. Are you um, in touch with Paul Heyman? Uh, no, I haven't talked to Paul in years. Years? Yeah. Uh, you know, you have a YouTube channel. Does he? Um, Heyman Hustle. Uh, on YouTube. Heyman yeah. Hustle. He does a lot of work in New York. Yeah. I think he lives in New York. I'm not yeah. sure, but I think he does. No, he lives in Scarsdale. I know he does a lot of work in New York, in the city. Like he runs around with a camera and just... Yeah, just, He does his thing, man. Yeah. And he got a page, and he got a lot of shit there. He got interviews with Missy, and he got a lot of shit there with wrestlers. Yeah. And stuff like that. yeah. That's what he been doing. He be on... He also be on Twitter a lot. I be on... Because I watch a lot of UFC, too. That's my shit. Yeah, that's so what he's So he's really into that a lot yeah. now. And he be on Twitter. Um, a lot of times when the pay-per-view shows are on, right, he gives the results right after the match. Like, yeah. if there's a match right after the match, he'll cool. say the result on Twitter. So, you know, he's like giving you a play-by-play -play as the pay-per-view is on, you know? Yeah. yeah. He be at the UFCs. I seen him do a couple of interviews with Goldberg. I seen him with um, Brock when, when Brock um, beat Carwin yeah. and he almost lost. Yep. I don't know if you know about that. And he was there and Stone Cold, The Rock, all of them was there. He was interviewing everybody in the crowd and shit yeah, yeah. the UFC. Yeah. It seemed cool, you know, he was doing his thing. What do you think about him, man? Why you think? I don't understand. What, what, what? You know, I, being that I'm asked about him now, in general, man, why do you think that these guys that have such, like, or I'm an example, Jim Cornette, um, yeah. um, Paul Heyman, um, you know, these guys, they they, 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 they have this, these, and everybody knows it, because I know Vince McMahon knows it, I know everybody else knows that these guys have a mind for this business and could offer something to this business, yet they don't have a position in this business. Right. And they will turn around and give a guy like fucking Vince Russo a job. Well, uh, I understand that. Paul is very, um, I know for a fact, he's told me this himself, that uh, he wants, you know, for him to, in order for him to, to participate in running a wrestling company, he wants full creative control. Um, that's always been a demand of his. That's why he had a hard time working with Vince, you know, and uh, it's just Paul. Yeah. That's just always been, uh, been the way Paul is, and uh, un until, you know, unless he's creatively in charge, he won't go for it, you know. Yeah. And uh, Cornette's working with Ring of Honor now. I know that. So, but then again, I'm saying again, um, who's Ring of Honor? Ring of Honor. Yeah. Um, Sinclair Broadcasting, do you know about them? Uh, just know that they bought out Ring of Honor. They bought Ring of Honor. Can you, um, who are they? What is that? They're a, a television group. They own uh, TV stations, a whole handful of them in the U.S. And uh, So they own stations? They could yeah. Put, they could put ROH show on TV. So right, and they do. That's what they do. Really? Yeah. yeah. They show, I ain't, I ain't hear about these show being on TV. Uh, they, I don't know exactly where they have their TV stations. I don't know if, I don't think they have one up around here. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Um, I just made a derogatory comment towards, a comment towards ROH. Yeah. But um, I'm going to correct myself now because I went to one of these shows and not for nothing. Oh my God. That company does a show and a half. They do, they do good shows. They do a good fucking show, man. I took him there. Yeah. And he was just wild. Yeah. He said, yo, these guys are crazy. Yeah, they, they he do said, these guys are crazy, literally, this yeah. guy right here. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I did say what I say, but it's because, uh, you no, know, I, I, I know it. I where, know. The, where the position they in. And, yeah, yeah. You know, but, you know, it seems to me like they, they, they put on a good show, man. You know? Steve Carino's a beast. That guy Steel, I don't know, something Steel, I don't know his name. For Carino that day, he's another piece. I'm gonna show you a picture of him. You don't know him? No, I don't. Something Steel. I forgot his name. Kevin. Kevin Steel. That's not him. Okay. You know? I've heard. He's a piece, yo. That dude's a beast. Yeah. 
a beast. He's an animal. I'm serious. He's literally an animal, man. I, I seen him one time. Became a fan of him. Wow. One time, and I became a fan of him. He's tough. You can tell he's tough. He got that. He got that real gritty, gritty mean streak look to him. You know, like that back in the day style, man. Yeah, yeah. You know that. And he's not in shape and he's a fat dude you know oh, like, really? like back in the days you know yeah, yeah. anybody can make it you know he don't look the part but you, you look at him and you know your shit you know he's a beast yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what i'm saying i do watch that man i'm gonna show you this show you a couple of them i got i got i got um some, some tape of him i got some video of him and carino okay so you can see okay. oh my god they destroyed the Manhattan Center that day. Child. They went crazy in there. Carino's an animal too, yo. He's coming to CW that day. I like him. Huh? CW? We get along. I like him, man. You don't fuck with um, Carino? No, I do. Both good guys. Oh, oh. Man, I went to, the, um, to a pay-per-view event and... Um, Virginia, the AW, I think I told you about Yeah, that. yeah, he did. And he was over there. And, um, Karina was? <laughs> no, CW. CW, yeah. And um, I know CW since ECW. Like, I've been watching him, and I, I kind of admire him. He was another beast, man. He was another guy I looked at him and was like, you know, he had it. He, to me, he had it, you know? And um, when I seen him back, you know, I was backstage and everything, you know? So I was, I was back then. He was walking by me. And, you know, I don't, I'm not the, you know, I don't like to bother them, you know? Sure. I don't like, you know, they walking around, but, you know, I just, you know, I said, fuck it, man. I said yeah. something to him, man. And, and when I said something to him, he stopped. He came to me, and, you know, we had a long conversation, and he was so fucking humble and so nice. Yeah, CW's a good guy. And, um, I really like him. And let me tell you, I left, right? Yeah. I left, and I, the, the thought never left my mind that how humble and nice this guy was, you know? So, so one day I'm on Twitter, right? And I see that he tweeted something, right? Yeah. So, you know, I'm still trying to network and things like that, you right, know? Right. So, you know, I always told myself, he's gonna be one guy that I'm gonna holler at through Twitter, because he seems so cool and down to earth that he's gonna respond to me, and I'm gonna tell him who I was to see if he remembered me. Right. We met, we had a long conversation, and I had a couple of people with me who was conversating at the same time. He happened to remember who I was. Yeah. So um, I told him, basically, I wanted him to call me and, you know, I had some business I wanted to talk to him about. You know, I wanted to get him to come, you know, do an interview or whatever. And um, he responded, he told me he was going to call me a certain day, called me that certain day, and made it happen, man. Yeah. Yeah. He's a cool dude, man. Yeah. Real good dude, man. So and and he offered and told me that he was able to get Steve Carino for me. Nice. And when it made that happen for me, so now I got both of them coming. Nice. Yes. Nice. That's a fish, you know? Yeah, absolutely. That was nice, man. That was bad cool of him. Oh, and I don't know, I had the feeling, man. I I, I had the feeling if I hit this guy, he's yeah. gonna, he's gonna help me. Yeah. You know, I had that feeling and exactly what I thought.